pattern the skirt, I looked at reference photos and then built my design on Inkscape. I then print these pattern pieces directly onto tracing paper. To transfer these patterns to the leather, first you want to wet your leather. Wetting the leather means it's much easier to shape it. Now lay the pattern piece on top and tape it to the leather. Sometimes if I can't tape it to the leather, I'll just tape it around onto the cutting mat. Next, you want to take a marking awl and go around all of the lines. So you can see in this design I've got thicker lines, so I'm marking over each side of those thick lines. For the thinner lines, we just mark over them once. So once the pattern has been transferred, it should look like this. Continue doing this for all of the pattern pieces. You can see for the straight edges, you can use a steel rule. And then for those curves, I'm just doing those freehand. Just a tip, before you remove the entire tracing paper, just pull it up and make sure you haven't forgotten any bits. Now we're actually going to remove material from the leather. To do that, we can use an adjustable V-gouge. This is a tool with a V-shaped blade at the top, and you can adjust the wheel on it to make it deeper or shallower. I recommend grabbing a scrap bit of leather and testing this first to get the correct depth. Without adding any pressure, run the blade up and down the line to make sure they are going to line up. Once I'm quite confident, I can then remove that material by gently putting some pressure down onto it. And you can see that's removed a little slither of leather there. I continued doing this for all the lines and then it'll look like this. Now I can cut out the shape of the leather, so I'm going around it with a rotary cutter. You can use a Stanley blade or a box cutter knife. The main thing is to try and make sure that it's sharp enough The hardest part to cut is probably the corners, so just take your time with those. I continue using the V-gouge throughout the design, so once all the pieces are cut out, you then want to dye this leather. To decide on colours, I actually just quickly marked on my design what colours should go where. Before I start dyeing it, I wet the leather. Then I take the first colour, and the purpose of this is just to darken everything to get the first base coat on there. Now obviously each panel has different colours, so what I did was just cut out several pieces of card in different shapes and it means I could go round corners and things like that and mask them out. It's good to have one with a curve and one that's straight. So this first colour I'm doing is a bit like Cordovan. I actually mixed several dyes to get this colour. I continue dyeing these areas with the airbrush. Something that might help you get this right is just to spray lightly on the colour on each section so that when you're going around your skirt you can just remember to do those parts. I was a bit concerned about the colours between all the panels, so what you can actually do with leather is you can sand the surface and it will remove some of the dye. You can't do this too much or it will ruin the leather, but you should be able to do it lightly just to bring the colour back. So I then sanded all these parts, trying to create some sort of a graphic difference. After filming, I actually then went back again and just made it slightly more purpley, more bluey. It just was so warm and I really struggled trying to get this to be cooler. What I actually did was buy a blue leather dye and just spritz that over the whole thing very lightly with a mix of dye reducer. To finish this off, I then decided to add eyelets to the top. And basically when I wear this skirt, all I do is put a little bit of twine through these holes and join the panels together. Basically to put the eyelets in, all I do is punch holes through the right size and then install the leather eyelets. So the skirt has metallic details and what I actually did was create the pattern and cut it with my Cricut. This means the machine cut it out, it's quite a lot of fine detail there. After I added Flexbond primer, I then painted this exactly the same way as the rest of the armour. So you add black gloss first and then chrome. Then you get this really nice metallic finish 
and then all I did was glue them to the leather with contact cement. For the metallic details at the side, I also cut this on my Cricut and beveled the edges. I painted these the same way and connected it to the leather skirt with contact cement. Additionally, I added a small piece of Velcro at the top of the front panel. This is so I could connect it to the belt to stop the belt moving around. I used contact cement to glue this to the skirt and hot glue to attach the other sides to the back of the belt. Now that's the Mighty Thor skirt complete. Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe for more tutorials.